a big fan of Walther Firearms. Starting out with a PPK, which I've had for years, I uh, actually gave that one to my dad because he really loves the PPK. He loves James Bond, <laughs> which is part of the reason why the PPK uh, has had such a following over the years. Uh, but it is an all steel frame pistol. It's very heavy uh, for its size compared to the new polymer styles. Uh, then with the P99, what an excellent pistol. And then the PPQ, which is just fantastic. I also have one of the Walther P22s, another great firearm. So I've really, I really love the Walther designs, and there's a lot of great quality, a lot of heritage and tradition in the Walther series. Uh, one of the things, though, that I've seemed to overlook. In fact, I've seen a number of them. I've just it's never really appealed to me that much. Was the PPS, uh, but it is a little bit. It was a little bit ahead of its time. A single stack nine millimeter, very thin. I mean, you can see how thin this pistol is. But there's a lot of really cool features about this pistol that separate it from a lot of others. I know really what kind of got me started really being interested in the PPS was some of Nut and Fancy's reviews. Uh, he did a tabletop and then. A few years later, he did a, a, a full field review, and his findings equal mine. I think this is an incredible pistol for concealed carry. A lot of times we get into different pistols for range use, and the PPQ is one of them. Uh, but, you know, really for everyday use, I think a nice, uh, small, compact pistol is really what we use more on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the PPS stands for Police Pistol Slim and slim it is. Uh, it is a striker fire pistol. It comes in 9mm, which we have here, and it also comes in the 40 Smith & Wesson. These pistols have been around for a little while. In fact, uh, they were released in 2007. But with the new advent of the Glock 43, I thought it was a great time to pull this out and talk about some of the excellent features of this pistol. First thing we're going to do is make sure the gun is unloaded. And to do that, we're going to remove the magazine. And as you see, we have the standard paddle design. A lot of guys don't like the paddle design, but I think once you use it, you're going to really like it. I really like this design because I can drop the magazine with my trigger finger. Makes it really fast. And uh, of course, the magazines are still framed. You can come around with your thumb as well because it is ambidextrous. So, you know, I think it doesn't take a whole lot to get used to that feature. Um, and again, the magazines are steel. Uh, they come with two magazines. Uh, it comes with a 7 plus 1, and then we have an 8 plus 1. Some models do come with the flush fit magazine, which is a 6 plus 1. In fact, I've got one of those on order right now uh, for this pistol to make it really slim and trim. So, you know, there are a lot of options, and it has a lot to do with the base pads. Uh, what this also does is it gives you extra gripping. In fact, this is a really full grip on this pistol. Of course, we do need to check the chamber to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. It is a standard striker fire pistol. It is a lot or, or reminiscent of the Glock uh, with the little tang that comes down. And what that's going to do is going to keep you from inadvertently hitting that trigger and firing the, the pistol. Uh, it has to be, and you can see the little bar in the back, and then it comes forward. Uh, one of the things I want to show you though, this, uh, this kind of unique, very unique actually, about this pistol is the striker indicator. If the gun is cocked, like it is here, you have a striker indicator, it's flush to the back of the uh, slide. This lets you know uh, just from looking into your holster that the gun is cocked. Or with the trigger forward, you can also tell the gun is cocked. Now I want you to watch the trigger indicator when I pull the trigger. Look how it comes out. The striker actually shows that it's cocked, but now it shows that it is possibly being fired. Uh, one of the good things about that is that when you're holstering your firearm, if you'll watch and you see this start to pull, you know that something's in the way of the trigger. And then it strikes and then goes forward and then it's hidden. We're going to check out the trigger pull while we're here. It states on the website that it's 6.1 pounds. Of course, the gun is unloaded. We're going to take our Lyman trigger gauge. Got this at Brown Ales. Great source for all your different tools. Five pounds, ten and a half ounces. Five pounds, twelve ounces. 
five pounds, 10 ounces. And we're getting under the uh, six pound range consistently. To check the trigger pull, pull it up to the wall. Good crisp snap, no over travel. Got reset, fairly quick. Let's try it again. Trigger pull, hit the wall. Nice click. We're gonna let the reset out. Reset's just a touch gritty, not too bad. Just a little bit of some creep, uh, and but it's fairly quick. And there's just no over travel to the trigger. There are two back straps, and I have the larger back strap on here, which is kind of a little unusual for me but um, you know because I have kind of medium hands uh, this is the smaller back strap it does get it down very very nice to the grip uh, it's really easy to pull these off too there's just a little uh, lever here you just push it uh, forward back to the grip itself and then it just comes out now what this also does it disables the firearm uh, this firearm cannot be fired I can go ahead and cock it see it won't even cock because the um, mainspring comes down and it rests right here and it has to rest on this little nub right here. Now to reinsert, you have two dots right here and you're gonna line it up with this frame right here and then it just pops into place. And here's the pistol with the slimline grip on it. As you can see, it does make considerable, a considerable amount of difference. Uh, again, I do like the larger grip, I think because of how thin the slide is. And very easy to remove and we're going to put back on the big grip because that's what i like the grip has really good texturing across the back here uh, not only does it have serrations but it has these lines as well and that really gives you a good gripping surface there are some finger grooves here with those same type uh, serrations and then we have these pyramids that come here uh, so it gives you a really good grip on the pistol even with the flush fit magazine but then, if you add one of the extended magazines, and this is the one in seven, the medium, uh, you can see that I have a full grip on this pistol. So, you know, it really makes it nice. Again, I do have medium hands, but I think even with large hands, uh, with the eight and one, you've got plenty of grip on this gun. It is, though, very thin. I mean, you can see how thin this grip is. It's just incredible. It feels really nice. Uh, putting it in your hand, getting a good grip on it. These are the most important areas of your grip. The other is just a, a feel of comfort. You just have a good feel to it. But with these two areas is really where you grip your pistol and no different than this one. Uh, you do have these uh, divots here or these recessed areas that give you a little more with your thumb and index finger to bring it in. The serrations on the slide are wide, but they're very easy to get a hold of. In fact, they're not sharp at all. They just really have a good feel to it. Makes it really easy to bring that back. Uh, your slide stops right here. There are no external safeties, only on the trigger. Uh, but there is a hammer block safety and there is a drop safety as well. It just is a really fine looking pistol. It has a has a tenifer finish on the slide. It is tenifer, very similar, obviously, to what Glock used for a long time. Glock's gone to a little bit different finish, but still pretty much the same type finish. Uh, it, is, it makes it a matte finish as well. Uh, it, one thing about this pistol, though, that's different than a lot of others is it does have an accessory rail. Uh, it is a rounded off slide. Uh, it's very just slim. There are no sharp edges. Uh, the trigger guard is rounded, but yet it's ample. It has a large area, even for gloved hands. The slide release is the only thing that keeps this from being fully ambidextrous, uh, but really most people now use just pull back and charge your weapon that way. Sights are large three-dot sights. One of the things I would like on this, even though it's it really gets good accuracy, and you're going to see at the range, I would like for those to be a little tighter. Uh, in fact, I've got some Trigicon replacement sights on order right now. And when I get those in, I'll install it and show you how that's done.
you know, I was really going to shoot two groups, but after shooting this one, I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> and I really like these easy to see targets. You'll see them on most of my videos, uh, easy to see.com. And I'll have a link down below, but this is a great target system. There's a whole ton of different ones you can uh, choose from. And I'll tell you, they, they bright up like daylight. As far as dimensions of the pistol, it's 21.6 ounces, which is a very, very nice weight on the pistol. Uh, it's just a little over 6 inches at 6.3 inches in length. It's 4.4 inches in height with the flush fit magazine. You start adding the, the base plates on the magazine, of course, it's going to extend that. And it's 0.9 inches wide, so it's less than an inch in width, which makes that really beautiful. Now, one thing to really note is the unusual ejection port. If you'll notice, it comes out and forward. Uh, this really helps with reliability. The shells are going to come out. They're not going to get hung up right here on the shelf. It's going to just pop right out, and I really like that. Uh, and obviously, when I was at the range, I didn't have any sort of malfunctions whatsoever. Everything functioned perfectly, and really, I was expecting that. It is a Walden. Uh, you pull it out of the box, and it's going to shoot. It's going to fire, and this one was no different. Uh, the uh, proof marks here, I really love the German proof marks on the pistol uh, in the white. And on the on this side, it's just Walther PPS actually engraved into the slide. Uh, the front of the slide does have uh, cutouts here to make it really nice to get into your holster, in and out of your holster. So it's really made for concealed carry. And yet, you could really use this as a duty pistol because it is large enough. It's not too small that it really feels tiny in your hand, but yet you can tell that it's really thin. The bore axis is not bad at all. It's not super low, but it's not high either. I think it's about a medium bore axis in my opinion, uh, but it, the recoil is really light on it and it just handles well. To me, it's not snappy at all. Uh, with the 40 caliber, you'd probably get a little snap to it, uh, but you know, it's like any gun, whatever you choose, you just master that gun. You master the recoil and you learn to shoot it well. Really, the PPS never really appealed to me. Uh, after seeing the uh, P22, which was so ergonomic, the P99, and of course the PPQ, uh, this really looked a lot blocky. It looked very thin. Well, it is very thin, but yet it still has incredible accuracy. I mean, I can't believe uh, how accurate this little pistol is and how comfortable it is to shoot, even though it's thin. Now, of course, I've added the larger back strap here uh, just because it's so thin, I like that just a little bit extra, and it really does help. So I think that uh, at the range, sweet to shoot, uh, no issues whatsoever. Those sights are nice and large. To disassemble the pistol, it's really simple. Go ahead and release your magazine. Make sure the gun is unloaded. Um, go ahead and pull the trigger. This releases your striker. Uh, similar to the Glock, you have tabs on either side. Pull down, and it comes right off. I mean, that is really simple. The slide on here is very well done. It's got a double recoil spring, captive. Barrel comes right out. Very nice proof marks here on the barrel. Feed ramps on the barrel are very nicely cut and even curved, and so that's really gonna help with reliable feeding, which, of course, this pistol fed flawlessly. This cut in the slide is just phenomenal. I mean, this really helps to get this slide back. No uh, problems with it get interfering with you know your spent cases. So I really like this unique cut here on this slide. Of course, the inside, very Glock-like, or Glock-inspired, I should say. And here we have the pistol field strip. Of course, to reassemble, just go ahead and slide in your barrel, recoil spring, guide rod, Go ahead and slide it over your frame. Ready to go. One of the guns I wanted to compare the PPS with is the new Glock 43 uh, because of how thin and small it is. And really, the PPS is pretty thin itself. But one of the things you're going to notice right up front is the PPS does have a longer slide and barrel. So it's going to be a little longer in um, that dimension, and then just a little bit longer as well in the grip. Uh, this does have the extension on it, uh, which we're going to take into account for, uh, which really makes it equal to, and this is the smaller 
of the PPS grips. Now you can get one of the flush uh, mag bases, which really helps. But magazine capacity is definitely one thing with the Glock 43 holding six rounds, or six plus one, and then the PPS going up to eight rounds with the extended magazine. Uh, so that gives you a little extra there. Weight on the PPS is 21.6 ounces. Weight on the Glock Model 43 is 17.9 ounces. So you have a considerable weight difference as well. And even though the slides are really comparable uh, visually, uh, the PPS is just slightly larger, about an eighth of an inch, uh, so as far as in width. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Now, one of the things you're going to have with the PPS is uh, less felt recoil because of just a little extra weight and a little bit longer barrel. Now, for a subcompact 9mm single stack, uh, the PPS does have an accessory rail, which most of the subcompacts do not and I don't really think it takes away or adds too much it does square off the muzzle a little bit but no accessory rail of course you know getting it really minimal is nice I think having an accessory rail moves this from just a uh, concealed carry to even a home defense roll now as far as extra magazines uh, I found in fact I bought one of the flush fit magazines directly off eBay I think it was like $36 free shipping not too excessive. A lot of times when you get into some pistols like this, the magazines can be pretty expensive. But I felt like 36 bucks, shipping included, was very reasonable. Um, you know, and again, you can get the different configurations, which really makes it nice. But now one of the things is this pistol is not hugely popular. I mean, you see them around, uh, but because of that, you're going to have a little more of an issue finding magazines in a store or holsters, things like that. Uh, one of the things, though, is which is really easy, guys, the Internet's easy to find all kind of different things. In fact, I get on and find holsters for about anything, uh, you know, just looking or, you know, friends of mine that make holsters, I can have them make one. So, you know, really, this is a time that, you know, that you can find about anything for any pistol. So that shouldn't really deter you from buying something like this. Uh, the sights themselves, I got them from Brownells. Again, they're on order, uh, but it was really easy to find and there are different sets. So, you know, and then again, we'll, we'll watch and see how that applies to this pistol as far as the installation. Now, the price of the pistol actually was a little bit excessive to me when I first started looking. Uh, I think uh, Bud's Gun Shop had them for $5.33. But I was finding them in a lot of different places. Uh, grab a gun, slick guns, and also impact guns. And they were all running around the $460 to $480 range, somewhere in there, of course, give or take. So, you know, you're talking about a pistol that's going to run less uh, than $500 for a really high-quality pistol. It does come with a hard plastic case with the owner's manual, and, of course, we showed the extra magazine and the back strap, and we also have a chamber indicator. And the usual uh, safety and all that stuff. And the notorious trigger lock, which obviously, and as I always say, goes in my junk drawer. My junk drawer is getting really full. <laughs> now, if you're following me on Instagram, you know that I am working also on the Walther CCP. Uh, and I will be doing a review coming up. And then we'll be doing a comparison review between these two pistols. And this is a fairly new offering from Walther. Beautiful ergonomic gun uh, with soft recoil technology. And we'll look at all that as well. So coming up, and it, you know, I'll have all the information from my Instagram account and my Facebook page uh, down in the description below. Uh, the Instagram is such underscore zero zero. Very easy to find. Always posting all kind of pictures on there and little videos. Of course, you can go to WalderArms.com to check out the home website for Walder products, and it's a really good interactive website. So I think that you'll find a lot of information. If there's something specific that I haven't answered here, I think you're going to find it on that website. The Walder PPS 9mm compact pistol, ultra thin, very reliable, very accurate. I have to give it a big thumbs up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
Um, and also with the hammer forward and you'll just now if you're following me on now obviously if you're and if you've been following me on Instagram you'll see that I have been also and if you're following me and if you're following me on Instagram incredible little pistol and you'll just now if you're following me on now obviously if you're let me see which is it Whoop, thumbs up